Hey guys, what's up? It's Maz here, and welcome back to another video. So with summer being just a few months away, I know a lot of people are going to be trying to stream some games in their free time, so I thought I'd make an updated beginner's guide on how to stream to YouTube and Twitch. As always, all I'm asking is that you guys do hit that like button if this video helps you out, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I do want to hit 200k this summer, but I really do need your guys' help to do that. Also, comment below, who is your favorite streamer? I'm going to be reading all the comments and responding to most of them, so feel free to do that. Anyways, I say this in all my streaming guides, but to stream efficiently, you do want to have a good computer and a good upload speed. A good computer isn't really just like a MacBook or something like that, but it's more so like a solid video editing or gaming PC. I'm going to have my specs on the screen right now in case you guys do want to know what I run, but anyways, a good upload speed is really just anything from 4 to 5 and above, because then you're going to have a really solid streaming experience. If you guys do want to check out what your upload speed is, go to speedtest.net and run your speed test. To get the most accurate results, make sure that you are connected with an ethernet cable instead of being on wireless. I also recommend streaming on ethernet too because then you're going to always have the most stable streaming experience whenever you're live. So the software that we're going to be using for this video is going to be called Streamlabs OBS which is a much better version of the normal OBS that I'm sure a lot of you guys have already heard of. But anyways, most people actually use this version of OBS for streaming including myself and it's usually easier for beginners too so this should be perfect for everyone watching the video. Anyways, for those of you guys who just haven't downloaded this yet, if you guys could download it using my custom link in the description below then I would appreciate it a ton because most YouTubers probably wouldn't tell you this but every install that someone does using my link, Streamlabs will pay me 40 cents, and trust me, it's all good if you guys don't want to use my link, you can use someone else's link or even just the normal link, but I thought I would throw that out there just in case. Anyways, when you guys are on the website, all you have to do is just save it to your computer by hitting the download Streamlabs OBS button, or it can automatically get saved to your downloads folder, I'm just going to save it to my desktop, and then from there, when the download is completed, all you have to do is just click it right here or just open it up from your downloads folder. All you have to do from here is hit I agree, make sure that you leave the destination folder the same, hit install, and you should be good to go. From here, make sure that you leave this box checked and then hit finish. From there, Streamlabs OBS should open up by itself. When it opens up for the first time, it will ask you if you guys do want to sign into your streaming accounts or you can set that up later, but I personally recommend that you should sign in with whatever account you use because this way you're going to be able to set up all the donation alerts and subscriber alerts for whenever someone follows or donates to you and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that later on in the video. That way you can have like a little gif or something playing whenever someone does donate or follow or you, you guys know what I mean. But anyways, like I said before, most big streamers do use Streamlabs for their donations, so you can trust them by signing into your account, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing with my Twitch account right now. From here, all you have to do is hit authorize and it should automatically sign you into your Twitch account, your YouTube account, or whatever you're going to be using. Um, there's a pretty rare chance that you guys are going to see something like this, but in case you guys do, just go ahead and hit continue. And then from here, it's going to ask you if you want to import any of your scenes from the normal OBS version that some of you guys might have used in the past. Now, for me personally, I will be importing mine, but most of you guys should be hitting the start fresh button. The reason I'm going to be importing mine is so that you guys can actually see like what my scenes look like and maybe use them as an inspiration for your own. Also, guys, sorry if I'm talking too fast in the video. On the chance that I am, just feel free to pause the video, rewind it, and hit play, and just make sure that you are following along with everything perfectly. Anyways, on the add widgets page, you can essentially pick which widgets you want to actually add to your stream. So for example, you can add like a chat box, which will show like your chat on the stream while ever someone's typing in the chat, it will also show up on the stream as well. You can also add like a follower goal or a donation goal, a viewer counter maybe, but for me personally and for most people, they only end up using the alert box because this way you're going to be actually be able to show your viewers like whenever someone new follows your stream like this right here or donates or subscribes or whatever. So all I'm going to do from here is hit add widget and then from there I'm going to hit add one widget. Um, we don't want to optimize anything because I am going to be showing you guys the best settings for your computer anyway so hit setup later right here and as you guys can see like there I am so now most people most people watching this video you're probably not going to see yourself right off the bat um for most of you guys it's probably just going to be like a normal like blank screen like this one right here and so now I'm going to show you guys how to actually like add a webcam and actually add a screen recording but uh, one thing I did notice right off the bat is because it did actually import my scenes from the normal OBS uh, my alert box actually came here so I'm going to go back to new scene Hit the plus button right here. This is probably a step that most of you guys probably won't have to do. I'm just going to go to the widgets, which is exactly where you can add the widgets that you were able to pick before. I'm going to add back the alert box. So hit add source and then hit add existing source. So as you can see, it's back here. And uh, now I can finally show you guys how to add a screen recording and a face cam. So for the screen recording, just hit the plus button right here. Go to display capture and you can pick game capture if you have like a full screen game open but um just for like your monitor display capture is normally like perfectly fine hit add source and then from here you're probably not going to see like a pop-up like this one you're probably going to see one more like this one right here and uh, basically what you do from this drop down menu is select like which monitor you actually want to show to your stream so um i have three monitors connected to my computer so i can pick between any of those but for most of you guys it's probably just going to be like one or two um i highly recommend just picking the first one because that's usually where like your gameplay is going to be and all like the main stuff that you're doing on your computer so I'm gonna hit that I'm gonna hit done and as you guys can see now you can finally see my screen in OBS 
Now, the same thing goes for adding a webcam. You just hit the plus button right here, go to video capture device, hit add source. And um, since I already have an existing source in another one of my scenes, I can just select it from there. But a lot of you guys are probably going to go to add new source right here. And from here, you're going to hit device, you're going to hit your webcam, and then you're going to go down here. And always make sure that you change your resolution from device default to custom. And then go ahead and change your resolution to 1920x1080 or change it to 1280x720. I'm just going to go ahead and import it from my previous scene. So when I hit add existing source, as you can see, um, now you can see me like back on the screen and um, obviously you're like, Moz, where'd my like actual computer go? So to fix that, all you have to do, or like my computer screen, sorry, but to fix that, all you have to do is just make sure that you select it on the webcam uh, source and then from there, go to the box right here and just drag it down. And as you can see, like you can kind of like resize it and move around your webcam. You can actually do the exact same thing with like your actual computer screen in the background as well. But most people usually just leave that full screen and I highly recommend that you guys do too. And one thing I do want to teach you guys how to do is actually crop your webcam because sometimes your webcam is going to like feature stuff that you really don't want to show on stream like i don't really have like a whole reason to show like this whole monitor and like this uh water bottle or really just anything like in front of my bed right here so to fix that all you have to do is just hold the alt button on your keyboard which should be to the left of your space bar and while you're holding that just go ahead and click on the middle uh box right here or the box from any side that you actually want to start cutting and then just go ahead and drag it more inward and when you do that you can actually start cropping your webcam which is really useful in case you want to like make sure that it works with a specific overlay that you might be using or whatever you guys want to use it for i thought i would show you guys that um if you guys do want to see what my normal streaming uh scene looks like um this is usually what it looks like it has like a little animator overlay right down here with like my social media and stuff anyways back to the new scene that i made for you guys so definitely like feel free to experiment with like whatever you can do on OBS and like find whatever works best for like the kind of streamer that you want to be. If you want to be a gamer, or, like a vlogger, ASM artist, whatever, feel free to do whatever you want in your scene. But anyways, one thing that we do want to do straight off the bat is that make sure that we put our alert box all the way at the top by just clicking it and then dragging it and then dropping it all the way up top. And as you can see, you should see like a little invisible box right here and that's essentially going to be your alert box. So you can make it as big as you want, as small as you want, you can move it around wherever you want and essentially whenever someone follows you or subscribes or donates or whatever, they will see like a little notification or like your viewers are going to see notification right here, like wherever this box is. But anyways, I'm going to talk about that in a bit, but let's go ahead and go on to the settings. So to do that, go to the settings button right here and then from there, go to the streaming tab. So in the beginning, when we signed into our Twitch account, Streamlabs automatically grabbed what is called our stream key. And your stream key is essentially a unique code that only you have assigned to your account. And anyone who has that code can stream on your Twitch account. So this is a code that you don't want to show anyone, but I'm going to show you guys it real quick because I'm just going to go ahead and reset mine in a second. But as you can see, like this is my stream key right here. And in case you guys don't know what your stream key is, or in case you guys reset it or something, all you have to do is go back to twitch.tv in uh, your web browser. And then when you're on twitch.tv, what you want to do is click over here by your profile, go to your creator dashboard, and once you're here, go to the settings and hit channel. From here, you will see your primary stream key, and you can go ahead and click the show button right here. It will say never share your stream key with anyone or show it on stream because that way anyone will be able to stream on your account, so you never want to show this with anyone. The only reason I'm showing it to you guys is because I can reset mine afterwards. So as you can see, this is the stream key right here, and it should match up perfectly with the stream key that we have right here. And it does. So in case you guys do want to ever reset yours or in case you accidentally leaked it or something, you can hit the reset button right here. It's going to reset. From there, you just hit copy, go here, go back to your settings, and just go ahead and override it by hitting paste right here. So anyways, from there, I can hit done and I should be good to go. But I'm going to go ahead and quickly reset it one more time because I don't want you guys streaming on my Twitch account. Anyways, now that I've done that, like I said before, your stream key will automatically be detected whenever you sign in with your like Twitch account or your YouTube account or whatever. So we can go ahead and just move on to the output tab right here. Now, since this is a beginner's guide, we're not going to be going in detail with like all these advanced settings right here, but in case you guys are interested in the advanced settings that I do use, I have made multiple videos on it on my channel, and I will have some of them linked in the description below. But anyway, since it is a beginner's video, what we're going to do is change the output mode from advanced to simple. Alright, so now I can finally walk you guys through some of the streaming settings, and these aren't the streaming settings that I use, I'm actually going to be changing all these in a second, these are just like the default that Streamlabs OBS gave me, but let's go ahead and start off with the, with the video bitrate. So, I've never met a single streamer who uses anything above 6,000, you really never ever have to go above 6,000 when you're on Twitch. And again, the only people who can use 6,000, like those high bitrates, are people who are already Twitch partners, because, let me quickly explain something about bitrates for you guys. When you're a Twitch partner, your viewers actually have an option to change the quality of whatever they see from your stream. So they can change to like 360p, 720p, 1080p, or whatever in case they have like bad internet. But when you're not a Twitch partner, you're not able to do that for your viewers. So if you're streaming at a really high bitrate, then they're going to have to have a really good internet connection to actually watch your stream. And obviously, like most people on the planet, they don't really have like an amazing internet connection. So I highly recommend that you guys keep your video bitrate at anywhere between... 3,000 to 4,500 because that's a really good middle point for really just anyone who's a watcher but also a streamer. So what I highly recommend most of you guys do who are watching the video right now is just go ahead and make yours like 
3750 because that's a really good middle point between 3500 or 3000 and a 4000 to 4500. And you're not going to be able to do this in case your upload speed is anything below like 4 to 5 because then you're just not going to have enough bandwidth available on like for your house network to actually be streaming and playing games at the same time while other people in your house are actually going to be using your internet connection too. So definitely make sure that your upload speed on speedtest.net is above 4 to 5 and make sure that your video bitrate actually compensates or matches up with that pretty well. Anyways, moving on from that, we can go to the encoder. And for most of you guys, you guys will probably be able to select something that says hardware NVENC. What NVENC means is uh, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is essentially going to be the graphics card that you might have in your computer. And if you have like an AMD one, then you might see something that says like AMD Radeon or something like that. And if you only see software x264, it's going to be really hard for you to stream unless you have like an amazing processor like an i9-9900K. For most of you guys watching the video, if you guys do see hardware NVENC new, definitely, definitely select that one. You might not see this if you haven't updated your Streamlabs OBS yet. Leave your audio bitrate the same. Anyways, moving on from that, we have the enable advanced encoder settings. We do want to leave this checked, but we do want to uncheck the enforced streaming service bitrate limits. Moving on from that, we have the encoder preset. And for this, basically, if you have like a really good graphics card, like a really, really good one, like a 2080, a 2080 Ti, or 1070, or a 10, uh, 1080 Ti, or a 1080 or something, leave it at max quality. If you have like a 1050 or 1060 or 960 or something, you want to do something between quality, performance, or max performance. So I'm going to leave mine at max quality because I do have a uh, 2080. But in, of course, like just don't worry if yours isn't the same as mine. Make sure that it works with the kind of computer that you have. Anyways, if you guys do have to use like the processor one, like the X2, 64 option it's going to be like different presets right here but like it says right here higher equals less cpu usage and then lower is going to equal more cpu usage so that should basically answer the question for what kind of like settings that you need to use if you have like a really good computer then go ahead and like feel free to change it however you want if you have like a really low end pc or like a really low end cpu then you might want to make it higher but anyways, I'm going to go back to the NVENC one because that's what I'm going to be using. From there, leave it at max quality for me. You guys are probably going to be doing quality or performance if I had to guess. From there, we can move on to the audio tab. So from here, just go ahead and select your headset or your speakers wherever you use. So this is what my headset is right here because I use a mix amp, so it has like a kind of weird name. So I'm going to hit that. For mic auxiliary device one, what you want to do is select your microphone. So I use the Blue Yeti as you guys could see in like my face cam earlier on in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, but feel free to select wherever your microphone name is. Moving on from that, we have the video tab. And now for base canvas resolution, almost all of you guys are going to be having 1920x1080 here because you guys more than likely have a 1080p monitor. Now for your output scale resolution, that's going to be the quality that your viewers are actually going to be watching a stream in. So if you have it at 1920x1080, that means they're going to be watching a stream in 1080p. If you set it to, um, I don't know if I can find, yeah, if you set it to 1280x720, then your viewers are going to be watching a stream in 720p. And honestly, this is exactly what I recommend that most people do on Twitch. Keep this at 1920x1080 and keep this at 1280x720. Now, one thing you can do is select it this and go ahead and type in 1600x900. And then from there, go ahead and enter. And the reason why I say you guys should do this is because the quality is way better than 720p, but it's not as high quality as 1080p. It's not going to be demanding as much from you or your viewers when they're trying to watch your content. From there, make sure that your downscale filter is Lanxos, sca sharpen scaling through due samples. It should be the lowest one in the drop down menu, so hit that. For FPS type, leave it at common FPS values. And then for your common FPS values, if you have like a really low end computer, then make this 30. But for basically everyone else watching this video, I promise you, keeping it at 60 is going to be the way to go. From there, hit done and you should be good to go. And as you can see, like my like whole like setup got all messed up. And the only reason it did that is because uh I accidentally changed mine to 20 or 1080p right here for my base canvas resolution. And essentially what base canvas resolution is, is, is it's asking you what kind of monitor do you have? So most of you guys will be picking 1920x1080, but like I said before, I have a 2560x1440p monitor, so I'm gonna select that and hit done. Anyways, moving on from that, we have the one last thing that I do want to cover for this video, and that's going to be the alert boxes. So, as you guys can see right now, like my if I go here and hit test widgets, let's like do a test if someone just subscribed to me right now on my Twitch channel, this is what would show up. So, as you guys can see, like that's what would show up. I'm much probably smarter to like move it under like my webcam or something like that. But anyways, to play with your alert box, all you have to do is go to the dashboard right here. And when you're over here, it should redirect you to a page like this one right here. You might get a pop up like this one as well. All you have to do is just hit go to dashboard. And then from there, what you want to do is go to the widgets button right here. From there, hit got it if you guys do see that little thing. But then from there, we want to hit the alert box. And basically right here is essentially where you can set up all your alert types and like all your alert GIFs, your messages, your font type, and all that good stuff. So this can be really overwhelming to look at for the first time. So definitely take your time over here. You're not in any rush. Make sure that it all works. And you can always go down here and just test the widgets and see how they look whenever you're live. So um, let's say I want to change like my GIF for whenever someone subscribed to me. So I'll go to the subscriptions one right here. Make sure that it is enabled. From there, I'm going to scroll down. 
I'm gonna go here where the image is. I'm gonna hit this little button right here. Or actually, that's the wrong button. It's my bad. I'm gonna hit this little picture button right here. From here, it's gonna show me the like uh, or the gifts that I already have available for me to use because I have like used my Twitch account with Streamlabs before. But for most of you guys, it's probably not gonna show you guys anything right here. So you can go to drag and drop upload. You can select for you can like look for a gif if you have one. So I have a gif of like Nade Shot eating like food. So I'm gonna select that. And uh, obviously, you can go on the internet, look for some gifts, find ones that you like. Hit select right here. It, now, if I go down here, hit save settings. Um, of course, one other thing you can do is like change your font layout and all that good stuff. It's totally up to you what you want to do here and even like the message that shows up. But from there, if I go back to the, I believe it's called the editor. And if I go down here, hit test widgets one more time, hit subscription. As you can see, it's a picture of Nate Shot eating some food and it says Mazda subscribed. I can move it around, stuff like that. And that's essentially how like donations, alerts, and all that good stuff works. You can put it on the same little like source right here and just change the GIF, whatever you want to do. Also, one thing I do want to quickly mention before I end off the video is the mixer right here. So in case you guys do have a webcam, you guys might accidentally have two microphones going on at the same time. So if I unmute this one, as you can see, like while I'm talking, this one's moving and this one. So feel free to mute whichever one you want to. I usually just mute the normal microphone and then leave the one that's attached to my webcam, um, which you can like go ahead and change in your settings right here. Um, so you can go scroll down and actually add a webcam to or actually add a audio device to your webcam. Anyways, once all that's done, you can just go ahead and hit the go live button right here to actually go live. And that's really it. Alright guys, I just had like a little editing mistake, so I'm sorry about that, but essentially it's time for the outro. That's really it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I am going to be on my way to 200,000 subscribers right now, so all help is really appreciated. Also, hit that post notifications button if you guys do want to. I upload a ton of videos like this one, like how to get started with streaming, how to get started with YouTube, other tech tutorials that I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video right now would love to see. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, do all that stuff. But uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.